Hi, welcome to CCA, Columbia Center for the Arts. I'm Leith Gaines, the Executive Director, and I'm very excited to announce that we are reopening after being closed for two and a half months with a new gallery exhibit. And we will be also bringing lots of content online, using our theater space for some small performances that people can watch through our YouTube channel. And hopefully some summer camps will be coming up. We're, we're doing soft openings where we can. And we really want to bring art back into people's lives and make our community center yours once again. We wanted to be sure that those of you staying at home had a chance to experience the First Friday celebration, so we've created this virtual live gallery opening for you to enjoy. Uh, we wish you could be with us, but we certainly understand the, the importance of staying home to stay safe. And you can see all of the artwork online, and please call us if you have any questions or would like to come in uh, at a different time on your own. Love to have. We'll be opening on Friday, June 5th for uh, First Friday, uh, and we are going to have a protocol set up for people coming in to be uh, properly sanitized and wear masks and move through the gallery with social distancing uh, protocol, and we really want to take care of the people coming in, as well as our staff who are here, so everyone is welcome, but we ask, of course, that everybody considers safety of others around them. So I'd now I'd like to introduce you to Carolyn Hopkins, our new gallery manager, to tell you a little bit about the show. Hi, I'm Carolyn Hopkins here at Columbia Center for the Arts, and I would like to welcome you to our June show, Essential Ebb and Flow with New Work by Jane Pegliarulo, Sarika Meek, Christy Strassen, and Michelle Yamamoto. We are having an opening June 5th. We would love for you to come in person. We are also open Tuesday through Saturday from noon to five. Or if you prefer to have a private appointment, you can email me directly at gallery at columbiaarts.org. We've also launched a new online shop where you can view the work, look at interviews with the artists, and purchase directly online. We've made a video to show you what goes into the installation.
And now we have some videos of each artist speaking about their work. Hello, my name is Sarika Meek. I'm a contemporary artist from Hood River, Oregon. And when I say contemporary artist, I mean uh, the work that I do has a concept or a theme um, attached to it. Um, I work in different series and sometimes I have multiple series going on at the same time. Um, in my work, I use symbolism. Uh, it kind of reoccurs throughout the years. Various things represent, um, you know, different ideas. And as you get to know me and get to know my work, I can show you some of those things in my work. And uh, for me, it's what brings meaning to my work and makes my, my uh, work as an artist feel meaningful here. Um, titled Continuum. This is a painting that I've been working on for the upcoming show. Um, oh, I can see my shadow. Oh well. Um, so this rope is a symbol that I've used throughout my work over the years. And the idea behind it is simply that the choices that we have made in the past um, will affect our lives today. And the choices that we make today can have an impact or an effect on the future. And so when I think about something like that, I think about it on a personal level, but also on a global level and um, an environmental level. If you look at the bottom, you can see some paint that is flowing upwards. And this is something that I have also used in my work. Um, and I'll talk about that in another painting. And then this black and white shape will also reoccur in my work. Um, the fish are obviously part of this water series and this theme. Yeah. Um, this is a piece I thought I could talk about. It's actually a, a mixed media piece. Um, it was done originally as a monotype and run through a press um, several times to create different layers. And then um, paint was applied after that had dried. Um, the idea of these um, paint marks moving upwards, dripping upwards, has always for me been this idea of a raising of consciousness. And that um, often happening as a result of some sort of great shift or change. Um, and then I have this fish in here because it's part of my water series and because I wanted to have something that represented life. I produced two series for this show. The first, Oceans and Seas, explores in abstract map form bodies of water that have resonated with me in my life. The locations are idiosyncratic to me and my experience and are how I imagine these places in my mind's eye. The second series, Ebb and Flow, explores water sources that contribute to our vast systems of rivers and streams. Graphic shapes and unexpected colors have been used as symbolic representations of these resources that we often take for granted. Hi, I'm Michelle Yamamoto, and I'm going to be showing you uh, the three pieces I'll be submitting for the Columbia Art Gallery June virtual show titled Essential Ebb and Flow. My pieces for the show um, are conveying a playfulness, sort of like a little fantasy world, um, depicting the next generation taking care of our planet, doing a better job of uh, my generation is doing with it. This one's titled Flight. And this one, I gotta back up. That's titled Suspended. Close up. And then here we have Tribe. Just playing with penguins. Can you imagine? Wouldn't that be fun? I'm Jane Pagliarulo. I have a studio in Portland, Oregon called Atelier Meridian, and it's right on the east bank of the Willamette River. And when the Columbia Center for the Arts invited me to be a part of their show, I was thrilled. And I'd like to invite you in to see my studio. I'm a printmaker, so I actually share the studio with a few other printmakers, and sometimes I work in creative collaboration with them as a master printer, helping to produce prints but sometimes I get to do a few of my own. So I'd like to show you a little bit of my process here in my studio. Um, Sarka Meek invited me to part, be a part of this exhibition, uh, knowing that water is a very essential theme in my work. Uh, not only is water essential to my life, but it seems to flow th through all the landscapes that I produce. 
and it's a very important element. Um, as a printmaker, I can produce multiples, usually with the help of this etching press, and I can usually uh, use a copper plate to incise lines. This is called an etching. Um, I also can use a photopolymer plate, which is a more modern way of doing it. And a lot of the time I like to make monotypes. Monotype is a one-of-a-kind print, and it's made by painting ink or rolling ink onto a plexiglass plate which has no mark or matrix or etched line to hold the image. So every time you make a print from this plate, it's going to be unique. So what I like to do is layer prints on top of other prints, and this way I create depth in my work. Oil-based ink is what I like to use. Sometimes I'll work with water-based ink, but I can roll ink on to the plate and then manipul manipulate that ink with a number of different tools, knives and brushes and brayers, Sometimes I can erase with rags. Basically, um, in this way, I create a print that is unique. To support the arts in Columbia Center for the Arts, please consider coming in and buying work or donating online at columbiaarts.org. Thanks a lot. Hi! Hello from Columbia Center for the Arts on Friday night. It's happening here. We are finally open after two and a half months and we're so happy about it. And to bring this fabulous show is our first exhibit in a while. Uh, my name is Leith Gaines. I'm the executive director here. And to all of you at home, I want to say welcome. We're glad you're here. Excuse my decor, but um, I am following safety regulations, so I apologize if I sound weird and look weird, but I really am anyway, so it's all <laughs> okay. But we're really happy to be here and to have energy in the space and to have people enjoying the art. And CCA wants so much, like everybody else, to find a way to serve our community during these difficult times and to serve our artists who are going to be a big part in expressing what we're going through right now. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our gallery manager, Carolyn Hopkins, who is going to introduce you to the artists and they're going to tell you a little bit about their work. Carolyn. Thanks. I'm Carolyn Hopkins. I'm the new gallery manager here at CCA and I'm just going to walk around. We're going to say hi to all the artists and just speak a little bit about their work. So we're starting with Michelle Yamamoto. Hi, Michelle. Hey, Carolyn. Good. <laughs> yeah, we all have multiple um, different options. Um, so you're primarily a painter, and um, one thing that I've been noticing about your work is that it is um, very allegorical, it's telling a story, and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the role of storytelling in your work. Yeah, it, um, a couple of years ago, I started this series, uh, and I was um, inspired by the plight, the terrible plight of our planet, mm -hmm. and, um, and how we're leaving a mess uh, to the next generation, but it's the next generation's love that will hopefully heal it and save it, and it just feels kind of funny that this show is opening right now when um, one could barely handle watching the news. It's so stressful and sad and, mm -hmm. and everything. So this feels even more poignant, and, um, but it's taken years to get it on the wall, and so thank you very much. Right, I'm, I'm right. really stoked to Absolutely. have it here. Thank you. Um, and then kind of the theme running throughout the show, Essential Ebb and Flow, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the work has water in it, has references to water. Can you talk about the importance of that in your work, especially in this series? Well, the quality of the oceans. Um, I used to live in uh, Southeast Asia, and you'd go to the beaches, and there'd be just so much plastic garbage. And so that was the first thing that came to my mind when I was invited to do this show. Um, that That's my inspiration here. I wasn't going to paint about it, but it was just like, we have to respect the beauty, we have to expect it, respect its original state, mm -hmm. and we have to do everything we can to get it back so that species aren't becoming extinct or, you know, strangling in fishnets. 
or garbage or you know beer bottle can you know those plastic things and uh, we just got to hopefully this world is going to change hopefully everything that we're going through right now is going to produce real change we have to hope and we have to vote <laughs> all right we're going to mosey on over to Sorka and peel her away from some folks Hi. <laughs> um, so, yeah, absolutely. That actually works a lot better because you can see your face. Um, so people have been coming in. They're really drawn to your work. I think the vibrant color and the texture um, in your paintings really brings people in. I've had a couple questions from people about the process of your work. Um, they're very curious about the types of paint you're using, how you're achieving different texture, when you're using um, what might be a decal versus actually rendering something. I was yeah. wondering if you could talk about yeah. how process works yeah. for you. Um, well, um, let's see, where to start? I've always been drawn to textures, and part of that comes from when I was living in Italy and studying in Florence. Um, just seeing the, going to Venice and seeing, exploring, kind of looking at the doors and the walls, an old baker's wall or a sort of a, 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 a door or a wall that was kind of eroding and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere in Europe. And just looking at rusts on things and seeing the beauty in that. And so I think that that sort of has always influenced my work going forwards. And I love the sort of the, the shiny contrast to that too. But in my work, I do use different things. Like these right. are little tiny um, fine uh, glass beads. Yeah. And I also use sand in my more earthy paintings. Mm -hmm. These are not the earthy paintings that I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I like to work in series so that I'm not sort of pigeonholed. And I come up with an idea and then I go with that idea and create a series. So for now, this is the water series. My next series, could have a completely different color palette. Right, right. Yeah. And do you want to talk about, I, I asked Michelle to kind of elaborate, you know, the title of the show, Essential Ebb and Flow, yeah. and certainly, you know, the common theme throughout the work is yeah. the presence of water. Yeah. Do you want to talk a bit about um, yeah. that and, yeah, and sure. why it's important and yeah. uh, what's going on? You know, I started the water series that, um, it's on my website, um, sarakameek.com, and I have been working on that series for, over 10 years, I think, mm -hmm. you know, and the idea behind that was that, you know, we originally, um, you know, we come from water, we are mostly water, and um, I think, you know, we, we need water mm -hmm. to survive, so water is life, that was kind of the idea. It's interesting that that slogan became used later on, yeah. uh, recently. Yeah. Um, but that was something that I had used a long time ago. And I think part of it is that, you know, for me, and I think a lot of people, going to bodies of water is very calming. We're here with Christy Strassen. Sorry about that little blip. Um, we'll be posting this later so you all can enjoy it uh, when you get to it. And Christy, um, spending time with your work, I've been really curious about the relationship between weaving and topography. And I was wondering if you could talk about that. and how you think about that in your work. I think um, I have always really been fascinated with maps and I, I love maps of all sorts and when maps started to kind of disappear and we started to do everything on the phones, um, I was really bereft because I had a very difficult time orienting myself on a phone map. I learned when, when I was using maps, paper maps, that you, you know, you hold the map in the direction that you're standing mm -hmm. and then you can place yourself and you can figure out where you are. So that got me thinking about how we orient ourselves in the world and how we tend to think of different locations. And I, I grew up on the West Coast. I grew up, you know, with the Pacific Ocean as part of my reality. And then... And then I moved to the East Coast. <laughs> and then I moved to the East Coast, and all of a sudden, there was the Atlantic Ocean, and the sun didn't set on the ocean the way that I was used to. And it, I was, I mean, I lived in New York City for 35 years, and I was kind of discombobulated for the whole time. Yeah. 
So I decided that I wanted to do when I was invited to be a part of the show, which was really exciting. I decided that I wanted to do a series of little weavings that depicted water locations that have really resonated with me in my life and how I envisioned them in my mind's eye, which is, is many cases is not like exactly like a map. It's kind of like how I think of them in my relationship to those places. So, you know, an example, this one is, is a little place in Maine called Round Pond. And I have a friend who has a house like right about here. This is actually an island. This is the Pacific Ocean. And this is a little inlet that has like a lobster pound, everything you associate with Maine. But in my mind, I always think of that location where my friend Nancy lives as a keyhole. And so I did look at a map, but um, it's my sort of imagination of, of Round Pond. And this piece, uh, the last five years that I lived in New York City, I lived in Brooklyn Heights, right on the Brooklyn Promenade. So I looked out at New York Harbor where you see Manhattan. So this is the lower tip of Manhattan. This is Governor's Island. And then these are the piers. So anyway, I, I love this series doing these. And I'm, I'm gonna do more. I'm gonna do a series of rivers, like the, just the, the line of the rivers, like where the Columbia starts way up in Canada and then it kind of comes down the snake, the Colorado. So I've been working on, on the artwork for these. So, and they were fun to do color-wise too, because even though they're all blue and white, they kind of represent, you know, all the different colors that water can be. Can we talk? I know we have to flip around the camera, but can we talk about those guys for a minute? Talk about which? Yeah, let's go over there. Okay. So this little series is completely separate from Oceans and Seas. Um, this is called Ebb and Flow and uh, very much connected with uh, the name of this show. And I, I wanted to represent water in a really abstract way to try to bring t to people's consciousness all of the different ways, all of the different kind of water systems that there are and just to make people think about how precious they are and so the top one is called ripple it is exactly what it is the one next to it is called um, inlet and you don't really see inlets like that but I loved the um, the idea of kind of abstracting these images or with this one which is called river and uh, that's a fish bone, which really isn't a body of water, but it just wanted to be part of this. And then the notion of a dry creek or the ebb and flow. So um, I purposely did these in colors that were not water-like as kind of a, a little bit of a joke, but also to make people think about them a little differently. So. All right, Jane, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your process in particular. I think a lot of people aren't necessarily familiar with different printmaking processes. Um, I know a lot of your work is monotype, and I was wondering if you could just elaborate on how all of that works for us. Sure. Well, um, a lot of the, uh, the, the reason I became a printmaker is I just have it in my blood. I love mechanical things, and I love problem solving. I think it's from having a dad who's an engineer yeah. and so I, I I just delved into it in college and it sucked me right in lithography and lithography can be a very painterly medium so I, I really love to to mess with washes and things and so when I finished at college and I got I was lucky enough to get a job at hand graphics in Santa Fe New Mexico I started out as a lithographer but then they needed a monotype printer and they discovered that I could work with all those painters so I started painting on plexiglass and 
and basically working with other artists who were painters and who were much better than I at doing a monotype. And they, in effect, taught me while I was the technician and running their prints through the press. Basically, a monotype is a, like a transfer painting. So it's basically a one-of-a-kind print. So you can just start painting on plexiglass or rolling ink on in a, in a very thin layer. And then the beauty of it is that you can erase. And so you get these amazing marks and you get these textures and ways to manipulate the, the ink and the pigment that you can't get in any other medium. Yeah. And so it's a really fun and really immediate process. So you can work the ink around because it's oil-based, it doesn't dry very quickly. So you have hours to manipulate it. And so you can add ink and subtract it. And that's why where I was saying there's kind of an ebb and flow to the way I work too. I, I add ink to the plate and then I subtract it and then I add some more. I get the plate where I want it and then I have a second plate because I like to put two layers, at least two layers on. And so I'll add ink to that second plate and because it's plexiglass, it's see-through, you can see the image and where it's going to land. You can map it out on the back with a Sharpie. And so there are all these problem-solving elements like which layer do I print first and then sometimes I actually put uh, Chine Cole, Japanese paper, embed that in the print um, right in the beginning when I first print it. And so there's a real technical process that I go through where I, I work with the plate and I get it where I want it. And then I put, a, put the plate on the press bed and put a damp piece of paper on the plate and put a blanket on top of that, run it through the press, and that just transfers the ink into the paper. And then the paper is pinched in the in the press so it's not going to move and then I take out that plate and I put the second plate in I put the paper back down on it and then print the second layer and then I peel that up and so it the ink just all comes off of the plate so there's no mark or matrix or etched line on that plate to hold the image so each print that I get from that plate is going to be unique so that's the other joy of monotypes is that it's it's a really unique process and we're getting one of a kind prints Okay, sure. <laughs> um, and then just thinking about your work in relation to the other work in here, um, you know, I think you all are very process oriented and thinking about the name of the show and the presence of water in your work. I'm just wondering if you could talk to us a little bit about um, the importance of water as an imagery um, that's happening in your work as well as um, utilizing landscape. Yeah, I mean, I was really, I was really thrilled when when you guys invited me to be a part of the show because water is such an essential part of everything in my life and in my world. I mean, and water cuts through all the imagery that I do, almost everything. <laughs> I there's always just even sometimes it's just just a little a sliver of a creek, but water um, plays a big part. Mostly, I mean, even when I was living in the in the desert in Santa Fe, New Mexico, I love the canyons and I, I became a river runner and I just love being in water, in, especially white water in a wild place. And so whatever I can do to get out and, and, and go see these places and spend time there, um, it, it informs my work. And so when I moved to the Northwest, then it became oceans and, and, the, and the high desert rivers of Eastern Oregon. So I, I really, I want, I, they're kind of naturalistic pieces in many ways, but I also, I want to become more of an abstract artist, so I'm always striving to get the shapes to be more abstracted, and, and a lot of it is about the edges where things meet, like the edge of where this cloud hits the water, or the edge of the, of the riverbank, um, and where the water also is reflecting the sky. I really love to play with that sort of that mirror image and and what the textures of of the colors and the the textures that are created by wind and the color that's reflecting from the sky onto the water and i love to you'll never see me do a blue sky it's rare because i just love the drama that the clouds bring to the whole situation and so i really love messing with clouds and 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 rivers and water together so it's just it's it's wonderful for me that I I get to see all these other artists approaching water in such different ways, and um, and and we all come from it from a different 
perspective and it's really fun to see even what Christie's done with yeah. the fiber yeah. and I never could have imagined that you could portray water in fiber but she's pulled it off so uh, it's really a, it's been a wonderful show and I'm just really pleased to be a part of it. Well we're pleased that you are part of it. Please visit us at our website columbiaarts.org where you can donate and also find lots of content that we'll be uploading all the time to let you know what we're up to and to hopefully entertain you and keep you connected. Hope to see you soon whether online or in our space. Thank you for your support and hope you had a good time.